Hi everyone and welcome back to our 2D game project series. In the last episode we worked on the interaction system and in this episode we're going to go ahead and take that forward into actually creating a door that will change its appearance and let us travel to another level. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we accomplish that uh, right now. Okay so last time we were here we were making an interaction system and we made a little test interactive object. Now this time we're going to actually make a door so we're going to change its collision properties and take us to another place. So let's go ahead and create our door object. I'm going to put in this new folder I've got here and new actor BP door. And in there, we're going to have a sprite. Paper sprite. And this will be the door sprite that we've got. It'd be it's just called there we go door. And we we'll choose a door sprite like that. Obviously, we're going to turn it up because we're doing a top-down 2D game. And we'll change its size because, if I remember rightly, the size for this is not big enough for the test interacting. So I can test that out if I just compile, drag that in. Yeah, see how small it is? Um, that's too small, obviously. So let's adjust that. I'm going to change that to 3.5 um, in those coordinates. And that's looking a bit better. Um, I'm also going to face it in the X direction. So I'm going to just turn that around. Just so I'm consistent with X. Being the exit. Now, sprites do have their own collision. So if I go down to the collision section, you can see it's set to block all dynamic. So if I were to put this into the scene as an actor, it will block the character's uh, movement. But one thing to be aware of uh, is that the ground also has collision and it's not exactly where you think it is because collision is projected up you need to adjust for that so if you go to the player collision mode you can see where that is so there's our environment pieces and the gray bit here is the floor we want to raise this one up a little bit so just raise it up and turn it back to lip and that'd be okay and this is a good idea because um, it allows us then to ensure we're going to collide with it. And it doesn't affect anything graphical because it's orthographic. So it's all projected onto a 2D surface anyway. So case in point, if I hit play, you see the door doesn't look any different. But it can block our movement. So at the moment, you can see our player character hides underneath the door when it's like this and like this. So typically speaking, when you're lower than the object in the wire space, the vertical, you want to appear on top of it, okay? And in our character's case, we want that to be the case for our door. So what we're going to do is we go to our door object and go to the sprite here. And we want to go to the sprite source. That's right. And we're going to look at its collision. So the MOX collision is 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 100. So much, much bigger. And if I go to the view mode for player collision, you can see it's a lot, lot bigger now. But that means that if I were to put this to the floor, like that, our player character should sit above it. Like so. Okay. So now we need to open the door. We have got this interaction system, so let's make our door work with that. So I'm going to go into my door. I actually might make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to change the sprite size here to uh, 5 by 5, I think. There we go. Um, so let's go to the class settings and add the interaction interface. So go to in implemented interfaces and add our interaction interface. This is what we did last time. So it should be familiar. When you do that, you'll see your interact with and look at are now appearing on the left hand side here. So let's go to interact with. Now the logic for opening and closing a door, it works basically the same as it does for a 3D uh, setup, but uh, obviously 2D graphically is gonna change uh, somewhat. So we can still need two functions for open and close door. So let's make those open door and Close door. 
And on open door, we're just going to change the sprite's appearance. So let's drag out the sprite's appearance and do set sprite. And we're going to search for the door that's open. Lock that in. And when you close door, same thing, but obviously you want to change the sprite to be the closed door version. Like that. We also need to change its collision. So we're going to take the paper sprite and set collision response to all channels to be overlap. Not ignore, but overlap. And the reason why we want overlap is because when the player overlaps it, that's when we're going to trigger the teleportation to the new room inside the house. So we do that. And then go do it again at the bottom to close the door. We're going to block all channels again. So let's test this out. When I interact with the door, I'm going to tell it to open the door. Then after three seconds, we'll rotate it to close the door. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. Rather than three seconds, we'll do an end overlap. So if I go to my paper sprite, right click, add event, end overlap. The other actor here is equal to the player character. We'll tell it to close the door. That way it won't close with us still on top of it, which we don't want. Okay, so let's go up to the door. Hit E. I can now walk onto the door. Okay, I have to walk outside of it. It closes behind me. It's pushing me aside a little bit. I think it's happening a bit too quick, so I might just delay this somewhat by one second and that should look a little bit better oh I know what it is yeah I know what it is so it's our interaction square is triggering the end of that which obviously we don't want. So other component here, we just want to make sure it's the player character's um, com capsule component, not the other components. So other component here is equal to the player character's capsule component. Use that instead. Because that square that we've got for interaction, that still is a component of the character. And obviously we don't want that to be counted as part of the player's collision. There you go. Much better. Okay, so let's make it so that we can now go through the door and trigger some logic. So on the door, we're going to fade the camera to black. So on open door over here, we're going to fade ca uh, camera. And if you're unsure, you just untick the contact sensitive button, and you'll see start camera fade. And in there, you can see it's going to require the player camera manager. So you take it from the target and do get player camera manager. And it's there. So I'm going to plug that in there. And it's going to fade to black from alpha of zero uh, to alpha of one over 0.5 seconds. And we're going to take it to hold when it's finished. That means it will stay black when it's faded to the end. So after 0 0.5 seconds, it should stay black. So let's go and test that out. So there you go. We can now got a door, um, but we haven't yet made it go from level A to level B. Uh, and back again so let's go take a look at that in the next episode uh, we can find that over right now on patreon.com forward slash ryan Lely. we find all my videos early from just one dollar a month thanks so much to all the patrons and youtube members for their continued support in the channel thanks for watching make sure you subscribed and i'll see you later